What's poppin'? It's your boy, Mike Powers. I'm not about the games today. We about to get right to it. Shit is very, very serious. I don't have time for the games today. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special treat today. The man that brought you Phyllis Hyman, Altered Ozone. Somebody asked me last week if I wanted to interview 50 Cent or one of these other guys to get 100 million views, maybe use a little bit of auto-tune. I said I have no desire whatsoever to speak to none of these cats. I ain't impressed with fame. Do I want to talk to them for? I'd rather talk to a scientist. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lyrical scientist on the set. My question is, how many masterpieces does this man have to drop before people stand up and take notice? Quantum Leap, Spring Forward, The Shoulder Series, Destiny's Cove, Second Summer, so on and so on. When I'm trying to put people on the good music, I only got time to drop like three, four, maybe five gems on them because cats got a short attention span out here. I got to know I'm giving them something that's undeniable. That list right now, when I run up on cats, is going to be Griselda, Makhami, Planet Asia, Rock Marciano, Nas, and Left Lane Dead On. That's right, I said Left Lane Dead On. And there is no separation between none of those cats. In my humble opinion, they are all on the same level. And what level is that? This is my metric. You can only hope to be as good as these dudes, but never better. And I stand on that. If you haven't done your research, we're about to start class right now. So get your pen and your notebooks out. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on the Mike Power Show, it is my distinct honor to introduce you to the man I crowned as the lyrical phenom, and that was a fucking understatement. Left Lane Deron is in the building, better known as Lefty, better known as Big Game Lane. What's popping? What's popping, my nigga? I had to do it like that. Okay, that's, like that's how, that. <laughs> that's how I had to get this motherfucker started. Some people might think I'm overly hyped, but what the music do to me, I'm about to express that. I don't hold back. So. Let's get this thing popping. First and foremost, how have you been faring during this uh, lockdown, this coronavirus thing? I mean, you know, just taking it day by day for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'd be looking at it kind of like, <clears throat> I don't know. It's a lot of different angles to this to this whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to ask you about that. I try to take it in, you know what I mean, to consideration and not go too far at the same time. So. It's all about balance with it, but still keeping the same precautions. You know what I'm saying? Just try to stay out the way and let it pass over so we can get back to, you know, doing what we try and do out here. Word. I feel Word. you. I feel you. Hey, so you are from Delaware. If you saw um, a couple of uh, reactions I did for you, I got the first one. I didn't know where you was from. Then I found out you was from Delaware. It's black people in Delaware? Yo, got to look it up. We lit. <laughs> I, like moments in even even where I live at. Nah, we, you know, we like a half and half state. Now, mind you, we, you know, we got white people too, but nah, we not. You know, they just gotta look it up for real. I got you. And what is the what's the hip hop scene like? And do y'all have a scene in Delaware, or are you and your team the scene in Delaware? I mean, I would say like it's a scene. It's been a scene out here for like twenty years for real. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't really nobody uh, really able to. I mean, some people got, got got far though. You know what I'm saying? Some people got far, but I don't think it was never nobody that really was able to really put the spotlight on it like that. So, right. you know what I'm saying? But I mean, other than that, it's always an underground scene out here though. Always. Okay, and um, I I want to know because I'm always interested on. Uh, what the genesis is what got you started on music like when did you start loving music when it started having an impact on you i mean i was really loving music you know really from day one for real like you know i got put on the uh i got put on the rap early by my cousins and you know i used to always just recite songs you know what i'm saying i could learn songs real quick you know what i'm saying hear them know them and, you know, the process really started like that. I wouldn't say I really got to really writing for real till like, high school. But, you know, once I started, 
But like, it was all a, it was all a growth period from then. Feel me. So when you was when you was a youngin, because I got stories, and this ain't about me, but I always tell people, no, I'm not gonna say that because then I'll be giving away my age. Hey, <laughs> when you first fell in love with music, who were some of those people that you was listening to? I mean, like even um, mind you, I got older cousins, so even when I was um, even when I was young, they would take me back to even to things that they loved from from prior you know what i'm saying so yeah. like it was definitely a lot of tribe for real yeah a lot of tribe if i talk about what my cousins was put me on to a lot of tribe a lot of nas you know what i'm saying a lot of nas um definitely in the hove you know what i'm saying yeah. at a young age of course like uh you know dips you know what i'm saying like you know even a lot of West Coast music too, though, for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of DJ Quick, uh, MC8, you know what I'm saying? It was Let's it was real broad, for real, you know what I'm saying? Bone, you know what I'm saying? They right. Used to play everything, for real, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, because like 90, I think it was 93 when uh, when MC8 started on that run, and it was it was kind of all about uh, West Coast at that time. And I, I was a big uh, Spice One, uh, MC8 guy myself back in the day. So, yeah, uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when did you know or think that you was dope enough to compete in this sport? Probably like uh, probably a couple years ago. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I always felt like I always felt like if I gave it an honest shot, you know, I could, I could, I could do well. You know what I'm saying? But I used to be caught up in a lot of other shit, so I never was really like. I wasn't really applying myself for real, you know what I'm saying? And so even, I probably could have been there years ago, but I wasn't really, I wasn't really putting the effort into it like that, you know what I'm saying? So, Got you. you know what I mean? Once I really started, you know, I feel like once you start and you get going, and you're going to grow, you know what I'm saying? The more you apply yourself, you're going to grow. And, but, you know, as far as really, I don't know, like something hit me, something hit me a couple years ago, though, you know what I'm saying? It was really like a process. I had went through a few things, you know what I'm saying? And the process of me learning, learning myself coming out of that really brought, it really brought what I wanted to really bring to the table as far as like music as a whole and like, you know, adding to the story for real. And we're going to get more. Narrative. Yeah, I, I definitely want to a little bit later. I mean, I got notes. I try to. I try to do too much. I don't. Maybe I didn't do enough. But uh, these are all the questions I wanted to ask, and I, I'm I'm wanting to get into uh, the duality portion of what your music presents, and we're gonna get into that in in a minute. It's so many of y'all that collaborate, that get together. I see you with different people. I see you with uh, Jay Nice. I see you with All Hail YT. Uh, I've seen you with uh, the God Fahim. Uh, stack skrills. What is this whole uh, the dump concept about? What's what's going on with the affiliations? Is this a loosely based crew, or what's going on with that? I mean, you know, it's really uh, you know, Fahim, Fahim, you know, he coined the term dump god. You know what I'm saying? And he been dumping since he been dumping since like 2015, 2016. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we had met, nice had met him in Atlanta. My nice had moved to Atlanta. And when he was down there, I was telling him, I was like, yo, you need to try to uh you need to try to link with bro. You know what I'm saying? Bro be really working. You know what I'm saying? Like he work hard. You know what I'm saying? Cool. And it's it's admirable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, they happen to bump into each other at Lennox Mall in the A. Just on a real live, like, yo, out of the blue, like, you know, God's work for real. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And um you know, after that, they linked it up, and, uh, you know, he came up here. He'd been up here a couple times, kicked it with us, stayed a while, you know what I'm saying? We might go up to NY, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, Where shoot the video? you know, that's my bro, for real. Where did y'all shoot that video for, um, what is it, 4-2? Uh, Hard 4? Hard 4, my bad. Yeah, nah, that was in Delaware. We shot that in Delaware. Okay, who backyard is that? <laughs> yeah, that's my people's backyard. You know what I'm saying? Y'all look real comfortable in the video. Yeah, we was hella comfy. We was hella comfy for real. Hey man, and I love Fahim. 
But something happened when your verse come on. Last night I was looking at that video and I just had to keep going back to like the very beginning of that verse where he handed off to you. You know what I mean? You kind of just take the baton and you go bananas with it. Uh, and then we, we'll get more into your, uh, your methodology. Uh, Jay Nice, who I have to say is also just phenomenal. That dude no, is absolutely. crazy. You know what I mean? Um, it's almost like sometimes I listen to Jay Nice, and I don't know how old y'all cast is, but it's like, you know, at one point I had heard Johnny Gill uh, singing Half Crazy. I mean, he's sitting at the piano with the little tux on. Dude was 14. Sound like he was 50. You know what I mean? Right, and Jay right. Nice got that voice where he just sounds so grown manish on oh, it. Yeah. Silky smooth vocals. And then he on another level in terms of just like peppering you with those gems. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. And His that, pen is the, crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And so um, one of my favorite things that I was, it was on repeat a few weeks ago on my YouTube was um, St. Sebastian. My motherfuckers took that up top. Real talk. Um, how do you choose the, the these incredible producers that you work with? Jay Levinson, um, what, Ronnie Alpha. How do, you, how do you link up with these cats? Yo, Jay Levinson, he came to the... Uh, we had did a little event in Harlem. Or matter of fact, in uh yeah, it was in Harlem. And he came up there and uh he met with niggas. Like he he showed up, you know what I'm saying? That was really how I linked with him. He came to the event, met him. I already knew him from working with Fahim, you know, a couple of songs he did with Mop, you know what I'm saying? So that was really was the whole Jay Levinson thing. You know what I'm saying? That's my boy for real. He hey, been to my crib too. He come to my crib and all that. Ronnie, that's my boy Chris's um Ronnie, my boy Chris is uh Chris homeboy. So I I met Ronnie Alpha through Chris, but really I be beating all these niggas through. You know, I I Ronnie then came to Delaware before too, a couple times. You know what I'm saying? So right. I don't know, man. It really, you know, shit just lined up like that. Honestly, and I th I believe strongly that you and Jay Levinson is a match made in heaven. It's like, like oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a I big that's just to see on the title, your name and then Jay Levinson. That's all. That's got to get a click just to see what's going down. And who who would you say are some of your musical? If you have any musical influences, who would those be? Past or present? I would definitely say like a Nas. You know what I'm saying? Nas, A Z. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Pot. Love Tupac. Tupac, like, my favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? I so would definitely answers, go there. That answers the question about the artwork. Yeah. yeah. On, dump, on Dump Life and yeah. Apocalypse. Dump Apocalypse, yeah. 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 So I, yeah. I, I did notice that. Which, uh, those are very, very dope covers. Um, and who do you, are those people that you listen to now, or who are you, who you vibing on right now? I ain't gonna lie, right now I've been chilling because I've been so much in like my little music bag. Like I be really listening to a lot of R&B right now just because, you know what I'm saying? Hell I've yeah. been looking to be inspired by just other shit, you know what I'm saying? And so I ain't really been, um. I'm trying to think, what was the last rap? I listened to Fahim new album. I fuck with it. Uh, you know, other than that, I listen, every time somebody one of my boys dropped. I always check they shit out. You know what I'm saying? For definite. I'm trying to think who else. And it could be, I don't, know, I don't even got to be rap. It could be whatever. Yeah, other than that, like, I've been listening to, I've been listening to that, uh, you know, Snow Allegra. I've heard the name, but I'm not hip to the music. You got to check it out. She, uh, she dope. My homie just put me on. And so I've been jamming her shit. That shit real. Beautiful, next level beautiful. Oh, I'm about to check it. I mean, if you said it, I'm gonna check it out then. Do you yeah, know who nah, Yola is, it's though? It's excellent. You know it's who Yola excellent. is? Say it again? Yola, you know her? Nah. Oh, yeah, okay. So, what you gotta do is go go to um, YouTube and type in Yola Tiny Desk Concert. She only do three songs. Okay. And the first one and the last one is so crazy. When you get to the last one, you're going to realize why I told you to go click that. But see, this is not okay. on my regular list, but this is on my side list. Sunset. That's on the Spring Forward album, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Chris Skills is on that? Who? Chris Skills. Yeah, Skills. My boy Skills on there. Okay, so that's 
a it's a theme album. And you talk talking about the season. I guess you I haven't been through all of your shit because you got a lot of stuff and I just gotta catch up on it. But I know you got this series. And how was it that Chris Skills, because he did the first verse, I believe, how was he so 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 easily able to get into the same zone as you to like talk about this season and the way he did. Did y'all talk about that? Did you give him instruction or you just said this shit is about spring? Yeah, nah, he didn't hear my verse or nothing. Like, that was really it. Like, me and my homeboys, we got chemistry for real. Like, we've been, we built, we've been building for years. So, like, he already pretty much know for real where I'm going with it for the most part. But, yeah, I definitely told him, like, look, bro, this is the sunset. That's, that's probably all I told him. Yeah. I don't really be wanting to get in the way of him being as creative as he could be with it. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't really be trying to put too much parameters and guidelines on it because I want the true thing that's in his heart to come out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was really it. I just told him, like, bro, this is the sunset on a spring day. And that was it. He nailed that, too. Nah, he, he did. did. Man, I need to look at the track list again because I'm so enamored. I'm wasting time right now, but where the fuck? What's the, what's the song right after? Is it 2020 Party Life? Yeah, yeah. God damn. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Is God damn that shit goes so hard? Um, who's your top lyricist right now? Right now? Yeah. In the current scene? In the current scene. I would say Mock. Yeah, good call. I would say Mock. He's in my opinion. Yeah, he's he's nuts. And what about like all time? All time? Yeah. Like if I had to think, I mean, like who's your Mount Rushmore? Probably Hove, Nas, Pac, Big, one, two, three, four. I know that's wild cliche, but I know. If but I really think about if I look at bodies of work. You know what I'm saying? And cultural influence. Um. Lyrical ability, you know, I would have to tear it off. I would make a couple different route Mount Rushmore's though. Yeah. As far as for, because even I would even say even if I was thinking about just being a historian, even if I think eighties, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Rock Kim, Kane, Cool G, and and probably Chuck D as a solo. You know what I mean? As a as the mic performer for Public Enemy. So like I like to break it down in the eras for real because yeah. You really can't take a, a lot of niggas and done some some amazing shit for real. Hey, I, I and I was on your IG, um, which I'm on there a lot, and it ain't up to me to number one. I gotta say it while I'm on it. It ain't up to me to tell you what to do with, with your IG, but I just hope you put a whole bunch more uh, pictures up of yourself on there because when we do more stuff on you, I need them pictures for the edits. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I might you know I might get out here this summer. I don't know if they. If they lift the quarantine, you know, I might yeah. take some flicks. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I'm like, I'm, I'm always digging and digging and digging. And it's like, you know, I'm liking to put those those pictures on those videos. I guess the people like it. Um, so I, I notice a, a tinge of different influences in your work. Sometimes I feel like I hear boot camp click. Sometimes, so, obviously, I feel like I hear Nas. Do you see yourself as carrying on the legacy of what those cats put down previously? You taking it like that? I mean, yeah, to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like I feel like we carrying on something that's that was born from that. Mm -hmm. But you know, at the same time, we always gotta make sure that we doing it our way too though. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know, as far as like as far as like, you know, kind of bringing that vibe, yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And, I look like a boot camp, yeah. Yeah, and then I was on your IG, and I seen, I, I could have swore this was on your IG. I saw you with uh, Scarface. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that Face. happen? How did that picture happen? My man YT, he, um, he knows Scarface. Like, they had a relationship back when, probably like 08, 09. Maybe before then, might have been 07 for real. You know what I'm saying? So he had a relationship with him, and, uh, that was it, man. That's Uncle Face, man. He's cool, for real. Man, that you know dude, saying? lyrically, whole nother level. Yeah. That. Diary. My diary. Oh, my God. He'll touch you. He'll touch your heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's what I love about Face. 
do you have people around you, like your team, that will say to you, nah, that's not it, that's not hot, or do you just self-edit? I ain't gonna lie, like, <clears throat> I'm in a space, like, I don't really accept too much, like, outside nothing. Because, like, in my mind, I'm trying to give it out there the way that I see it in my head. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And now, mind you, I definitely didn't see situations where it was like, okay, wow, that song, like, if I look at analytics, I'd be like, wow, that song actually did better than I thought it would. And then maybe another song that I thought was going to do well, maybe not so much. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I ain't saying that it may be not room for it. You know what I'm saying? But as far as, like, when I'm putting my little projects together and shit, like, nah, I don't really take no outside shit from it. Because I kind of, like, I kind of know where I want to go with it. And even if I always look like it's, it's, it's for me, for real. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, the way I, I laid it out really is the way that I wanted to hear it for myself. You know what I'm saying? So, got you. So, yeah. You know what so, mean? what made you settle on? Um, I'm hearing a lot of soulful beats. I feel like you're taking us back to the '80s a little bit with the soul. Oh yeah. What made you like settle on that? Yo, that's really uh, you know, that's production for real. That's really Jay Levison. Like, now mind you, that's how I always knew that he was kind of like somebody that I wanted to fuck with extensively because he had that, he had that sound. And when I first heard it, I was like, yo, I could do these all day easy. Like I don't even got to try, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like shit just comes to me, you know what I'm saying? So one thing I always say is like, once a rapper find a production that he really is in tune with, then you're going to really see the best version of that rapper. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And any rapper that, has not got there yet. Like, even if you go back and judge people old work, you always got to take into consideration that he might not have found that production match yet that really got him in the groove for real. Right. You know, some niggas might never find it, and that's really crucial for, crucial for real. You know what I'm saying? And I think that people was kind of disappointed that Just Blaze didn't show up on the uh, Jay Electronica album. But oh, yeah, absolutely. Reason. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and I do got to say this, and this ain't you. And there's no reason for you to acknowledge what the fuck I'm about to say, but I say what the fuck I feel, and what I think. I was watching the video. I don't know. I forget the name of the song. The guy, I don't know who the guy is, but I know Sky Zoo was on it. Then you did the last verse. Yeah. Okay. So this is me saying this, that I'm a, I'm a big Sky Zoo fan. I could walk down the street. People don't know who the fuck I'm talking about, whatever. Sky Zoo is that dude. You murder Sky Zoo on the cut. I said that. You ain't gonna say nothing about it. I'm just saying that's oh, no. talk about it. You, when you, I don't know, man. He got it off, man. I don't know. He I got I off. You saying that, and I love Sky Zoo. I love he got off. everything he do. When I saw you get on top, pause of Sky Zoo. That was a whole moment for me. I was like, this dude just ate Sky Zoo up on this cut, and I'm just saying that in all honesty. It's it's hip hop. It's a sport. It's all it's all for fun. You know what I mean? Um, what is your creative process like? Do you start with the lyrics? You start with the beat. Definitely start with the beat. I I basically I write to the beats. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even really a nigga that got a bunch of verses in in the stash. Like I write on the spot. Like when I'm working on something, I pull the beats up, I sequence them, and I write in order for the most part. You know what I'm saying? That's how I do my thing. You know what I'm saying? And then how long does it usually take you from the time you start writing to when you finish your last verse? I mean, I'm not laying it, really it, down. All, it really all depends for real. Like, it, it, it really depends on what's going on for real. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because I might be running around. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that could definitely push it back. You know what I'm saying? But, like, and even sometimes, like, certain beats, that right way to even come on don't even come to you for, like, a few Right. You might gotta you might gotta run it for a little while. Right. And you know, you always trying to make sure that whatever come to you, when it comes to you, it's natural and you like, okay, yeah, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you know what I mean? It could be and it could be a week. It could be, you know, I could it been times where I done wrote shit in like two days, whole whole projects, you know what I'm saying? Right. And then it been times that I might have took a took a month, you know what I'm saying? 
I might have went and worked on other shit and came back and revisited something and you know what I'm saying? Sometimes like the beat it get a little a little numb on my ears. So I might have to just walk away for a little while. Right. Yeah. And then come back and maybe finish up. So, you know, I ain't gonna lie, it ain't no real specific process with it. Like it's more just off the vibe. Like sometimes the vibe be there and you running. And then sometimes, you know, you gotta take a little break. You know what I'm saying? Step back, come back later. So let's talk about the mix on uh, Half Moons, which is a fucking another incredible joint. Um, the way your voice sits on that beat is so perfect. I don't even know if you distinguish that from any one of your other songs. To me, I hear it. I hear your voice sitting right on top of the beat perfectly. And does the producer have his own engineer for you? Do you have your own engineer? But talk to me about that mix. I mean, my homie, my homie, YT do all my mixes for real. Oh, hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow. Why do all, all my mixes for real? So like uh you know, we be uh we be conversing back and forth about where things uh should be at, you know what I'm saying? I feel like most of the time we get it right. Sometimes it might be a little you know, a little off, but I mean I've know. heard a couple of cuts where I wish I could have heard you just a little bit better. That wasn't bad. It was just like you was right if they would have just but that mix right there was so. And is YT from Delaware? He um he from Texas for real, but he moved up here when we was in high school. You know what I'm saying? He got family out here. He got a big family out here. So you know what I'm saying? He had came up here in high school, and we linked up then for real. You know what I'm that saying? That sick. And this is the other thing I like about all of y'all that that kind of running in that same circle is that y'all kind of unapologetically do what the fuck you want to do. Like, y'all all got y'all yeah. own separate style. You got bars, but y'all in your own pocket and not really paying too much attention. From the outside, it looks like y'all not paying attention to what somebody might say is pop and what the, a, a particular trend might be. It's, it's wholly unique, in my opinion. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, the whole, at least for me, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make sure that I build my discography. So even, like, say I go, I'm I'm gone. If somebody find this discography, it's like you found something. You like, you know what I'm saying? Like you gonna run through it and be like, okay, I understand who this who this kid is that was growing up 2020, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's really the whole goal. I don't really look to really like I don't really look at the way I'm making my music like for the current. I'm really trying to put it together for the overall legacy of it. For yeah. Real. yeah. Okay. And uh, you, you dropped in 2012 was your first project, I believe. Absolutely. Okay. And then, so eight years later, looking back, can you speak on how your style and your pen game has evolved in that time? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I went through a lot during that period, you know what I'm saying? So just, you know what I'm saying? Everything that was, transpiring uh the maturity that comes with eight years you feel me yeah like you know anybody that is growing consists constantly you know what i'm saying like you know you're not the same eight years ago as you is now you know what i'm saying so right. like i would definitely say just my my growth as a person has helped my growth in in music for real you know what i'm saying got you and then Let's talk about, talk to me about the song, C.C. Peniston. Okay, first of all, uh, I'm going to call her 90s dance icon. Yeah. Um, finally was the jam. Yeah. I want to say, I'm about to say, I'm about to play <laughs> the wrong song. Because um, I'm, I'm thinking of Sybil too, but it ain't Sybil. C.C. Peniston. So, in that song, you say that you hope you and her can be friends again. Do you actually know C.C. Peniston? Nah, 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 nah. Okay. <laughs> and all of them, um, so mind you, mind you, I done done like uh me and Nice do them joints where we did Stephanie Mills. And I haven't heard Phyllis that Hyman. one yet. Yeah, we did Phyllis Hyman, we did Stacey Lattisaw, okay. and now we had CC Peniston. And basically in all of them I, I kind of infer like some type of interaction. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? <laughs> Just you know, it's all it's all in creative fun for real. That shit was so dope though, like the whole concept of the song. Same thing with Phyllis Hyman. What actually when I saw Phyllis Hyman, 
which I'm pretty sure I forget. I smoke. Um, I think I did a reaction to that. I'm pretty sure. And when I first saw that, I just thought it was so fucking different. Like how y'all did that. And then the video, I'm like, yo, this is just like Phyllis Hyman is in the whole video. They not even in this video. Shit was so dope, yo. Yo, we didn't even make that. Somebody else did that for real. That's the crazy. video? Yeah, yeah. That was like, a, you know, I don't even know who that is. They kind of put that together. Well, that shit like, looks sweet. I, I mean, I was a bit, uh, a little bit inspired by that. Um, so when I put together, I don't know if you have seen the video that dropped uh, for CC Peniston, but I tried to get somewhere close to the vibe of what they was doing in that. Because I like what they did with that. Um, okay. 